Hello, and what's up, everybody? I want to tell you about something I did this week. On Wednesday, I went to, um, how would you call it? Basically a business thing. Their motto was Hustler to CEO. It was from a group, this is their logo. It's supposed to be the letter M or also a fist. Um, it's called The Menaces or Menace in Business is the name of their organization. And it's a couple really energetic young guys that are ready to take on the world. I found out about this because they were actually having a little convention uh, a few months ago. Um, they call it MenaceCon. Um, I did not go to that, but one of my Facebook friends um, was actually one of the speakers that they invited to be there, um, a Mr. Jordan Adler. Um, and he posted all these cool, interesting things about how exciting he w it was for him to go to this event. Unfortunately, I was already booked and I was going to be out of state during that time, so I couldn't go. But it was interesting, and because I watched a couple videos about that, Facebook remembered that, and when they were having this next event, uh, to try to kind of introduce what they do and um, get people involved, Facebook remembered that I might be interested, so they heavily promoted it in my feed. And I said, sure, why not? I'll sign up. I'm always willing to learn a lot of stuff. Um, there's this guy named Aaron who reached out to me. He was a really great guy, answered a lot of questions, um, was very, very positive and upbeat, really liked the vibe that we got from, that I got from him. So I decided to go on Wednesday. When I get there, they give you this little book. They gave you a really cool ink pen. Um, it's the number one thing that they first started out is talking about something that they call core values. And they never went, went through their core values, but this is their core values. Um, some of them aren't really, you know, talk, they didn't really talk about them much at all during the event that we were at. <clears throat> but a few of them they mentioned quite a few times. And they, um, what I'm going to do in this video, and the whole reason I'm put, making this video, is I'm going to kind of recap what I learned in that event and take the hours and hours that I put into it, boil it down to a few minutes, uh, well, probably going to be 20 minutes or so. I have no idea. We're just making the video. Um, and that's what, the, that's what this video today is about. Um, I'm Jason here from Emerald Computers, and we're here in the Phoenix metro area. This was held in Tempe, which is eh, a little bit east on the east side of Phoenix metro area. So they said that your company and organization should have somewhere between five and nine core values. And these core values should be so fundamental and so bit, you know, appropriate to your business that as you do things, as you have conversations, as you talk to people, these core values will come up all the time. And I can tell you, a few of these core values did come up all the time while they were presenting. The number one core value that probably came up the most was their philosophy of get attention, keep attention, which is something that's interesting. Um, I've always been trying to get attention from people uh, sometimes for my business so that I can grow my business and um, be more successful for me and my clients and my employees, um, my workers. But one of the things I haven't done is the part of uh, keep attention. You know, once I get somebody's attention, sometimes I'll go and I'm like, you know, I'm busy working and I might go spend a whole month without hardly posting on social at all, um, social media, nothing like that. So talking about getting attention, keeping attention is pretty interesting. And they were extreme in the get attention thing. I mean, they were talking about posting three, four, five brand new videos daily to your social. And at, by the end of the convention, I'm pretty much sold on that. And this video is one of the ones I did, you know, reset up my little studio here. I have not made a video from this studio. Uh, what is my office, my home office? I haven't made a video from this home office in probably six or eight months. And most of those videos were very specific videos for either training or something. And they, they didn't go on the internet. So... Um, they didn't go where, you know, like on YouTube or anything. 
But if you remember my old channel and my old videos, you know, I have videos with 80,000 views and stuff like that and very popular views. And, you know, what's, you know, I, and I just need to really go back to almost daily making a video. Now, I am going to break one of their rules. Uh, one of their rules is don't make the video more than five minutes. Um, this video is going to be way longer than that. Sorry. We're already at five minutes. My gosh. Five minutes and 32 seconds. Um, this group was created by three guys. One guy doesn't seem like he's involved in the group anymore, um, but the two guys that were there, uh, one was a guy named Jason Payne. Um, he runs a company called State 48 Roofing. I believe he also does some other things uh, with State 48. He was... Uh, you know, very energetic, in-depth about systems, processes, you know, making rules in your life and, and just definitely hitting it hard, um, going for it, you know, having high expectations of yourself, having high expectations of your crew. Um, he had a really good uh, positive message and vibe for the most part. I definitely enjoyed that. Um, the other guy is um, a guy that he goes by Nikki T., um, but his real name is uh, Nicholas Trevillen, or Tr Trevillen, or something like that. Um, he was a, like a superstar realtor over in Chandler, Gilbert area. Um, I, I don't know too much about his story. He didn't really get, I, I didn't really hear him say too much about it. Um, but I do know that um, he reevaluated his life. He got cancer, ended up moving to San Diego. I have no idea what the timeline for any of that is. I did not hear that part um they're both really good guys and i would say um i don't know if you if you ever watch the youtube channel there's a guy named chad wild clay um who also kind of went through cancer here in the valley and all that type of stuff and chad wild clay and nikki t have like almost the same energy and the funny part is they're both tall skinny guys and they almost you know, other than the beard look pretty similar to each other um you know as, a, as somebody who's in their upper 40s and, you know, obviously clean-shaven, clean-cut, you know, it is a little bit of a culture shock going into a place where pretty much everybody there was in their 30s, um, maybe a little bit younger, and there was a couple people, a handful of people that were older, um, and the vast majority of them all had full beards, you know, some of them were here, some of them were down the ear, um, you know, definitely, you know, quite a few people, you know, they didn't use the same vocabulary that I do, and you know I'm usually a pretty clean cut. Uh, they definitely weren't, weren't, and they definitely you know used a lot of the words that I usually choose not to use. Um, but some of those words, and you know which words I'm talking about, um, get the message across a little bit more clear and a little bit more emotional. And I believe that those words definitely have their place to show emotion. I just, I'm not going to be using them on this video. So what are the other ones? So they didn't really go over most of these other ones too great, too greatly. The other, the only other one that they really did top, talk about a, a little bit was give first and add value without expecting anything in return. Um, that's something that I like to do. I mean, we've been doing that in our business for a long time. We give people free tune-ups. We don't expect anything in return. I mean, we would like them to, if their computer is awful, to possibly consider us for their next computer. That would be nice. Um, but I don't require it, and I don't expect it. If they go somewhere else and get a computer, I'm totally okay with that. We're here to serve them, and we're here to let them know that we exist. Uh, that's one of the things they were doing there. I, it also gave me a little bit of ideas, like on uh, some of the social media stuff that I use. Maybe um, part of the reason I haven't done certain things is because I'm trying to figure out how to monetize it, and maybe I should just do it anyway and not monetize it, and hopes that something of value comes in the future. And that's definitely something I'm going to be considering doing. So. Their general idea and their whole general mo motif was scaling from a hustler to a CEO. Uh, what does that mean? Do they, I mean, and because I did participate quite a bit in the group, they actually gave me this really cool box. It has their logo on there. And in this box, 
Um, they have CEO. It just says CEO. With their menace in the O. Um, let me take this out of the box. And they did have MBA. <laughs> um, menace Business Audit. And I'll tell you more about that here in a few minutes. The box does have this very interesting smell. Um, I like how they, you know, they're very, very casual. They call themselves the Them Menace Boys. Um, they have a YouTube channel. I kind of felt a little bit bad for them because, the, you know, I was number 47 subscribing to their YouTube channel. And they're sitting there doing, you know, much higher production videos than I'm doing for you right now. Um, with guests and multiple locations and cameras and edits and all this stuff. And then the view get there's like 20 views. And the, the video's been up for three months. Um, so I really hope that their YouTube channel does take off. I am going to be linking to their YouTube channel in the bottom of this. If you are a business owner, I would highly recommend you subscribe. They do have a lot of really interesting things. So first off, I get to this place in Tempe. It's a pretty decently sized room. A room that could easily hold probably 200 people. Uh, the back half of the room is mostly empty. There's probably about, uh, I would say, 180 or so chairs set up, and it's less, th it's, when I get there, not even a quarter of the way filled, and, but by the time the, the meeting starts, um, it is mostly filled up. So, we started the meeting, and there were uh, about, I would say, 80 or so people in the room. And I quickly learned, probably within the first 10 minutes or so, that uh, maybe only about a dozen or so of us were guests. Everybody else was affiliated one way or another with Menace already, which that was a little bit weird. Um, but it ended up that they were there to teach a lot of really good messages. And unfortunately, I have it written on my little chicken scratch, so I will kind of read it and hopefully we will get there. And there's a lot of really good juicy points here. I'm just going to gloss over it right now and in the future I will be making some videos that will elaborate on some of these things right here. So one of the things that they said is tiny hinges swing giant doors, which means, you know, if your goal is to go here and you're not, you're going over here, well it only needs to change few degrees. You only might maybe change one little tweak in your business and you'll get to your goal. Um, you know, you need to up, you know, add 30% to your sales. Well, it might just be a little bit of follow up here, a little bit of, you know, thanking the customer here, sending out some rewards over or something, some like gifts to the customer maybe. And boom, you're there. $1,000. Um, I mean, a thousand reasons why you're going to be more successful. So the next thing is be the architect of your business. You know, actually sit there and think about what you want your business to be and design your business and, you know, every imagine every little piece, every little function and how it's going to be to get there. Don't just let other people build it. Don't let it just build itself. Um, quite a lot of other interesting things. Um, the next one is, is I definitely wrote in here that I need to come up with the core values of my business. I, I've always had one main core value, which is, you know, we're here to serve the customers. I want everybody from the top, from me, everybody else in the organization, our end product is to serve the customers, make the customers happy. And when the customers are there, they are, they are our focus. And when there's no customers there, then our focus is to make the next customer to walk in have the most pleasant experience they can. We're going to get computers ready. We're going to clean their building. We're going to do all, we're going to clean the building. We're going to do everything we possibly can to make it very, very easy when they get in there. I, they did say quite a few things that I did not write down um, on the first day, on this day here. So they did say if you're trying to teach somebody, you're training somebody who is brand new to your company, or you're training somebody who needs some training in, on a new task, 
So do it in three ways. The first way is you teach them, but you don't do it verbally. You don't sit there and, you know, teach them. You do it non-verbal. Preferably, you make a video. And you make a video with the exact standards of practice. You upload it to the internet where they have access to it 24-7. And if they need to go and look at that video to figure out how to do it, you know, I, I've had employees in the past that are afraid to come and ask me how to do something that I've shown them how to do three times because they they don't want to look like they're not getting it or something. But if I had a video showing them how to do it, guess what? They could just watch that thing ten times and be able to figure it out. Plus, when I'm doing the video, I'm going to make sure I do it right. So you train them how to do it. Then you show them and you do it once with them and you watch them. You watch how they do it and then you iterate um, you know, give them a little bit of feedback, give them a little bit of thing like, you know, hey, maybe do this, um, you know, watch the video again, that type of thing. Um, record, one of the number one things they hammered in over and over and over is record everything that you're doing. Record any time, like say for example, you a customer asks you a question. A customer asks you this question, well, what you do is your employees might not know what the answer to that question is. You might even not know the answer to that question. You go research it. Well, you just spent 15 minutes researching it. Well, why don't you whip out your camera and spend three minutes recording the answer to that question? Because maybe someone else might not have that might have that question in the future. You put that in a folder where your employees could watch it. You put it maybe on your YouTube. You put it maybe on your Facebook. You know, and it lets people get the answer to the question that they want it. Now, let's see, where are we at right here? So this was a particular one, uh, primarily about our business and how we would increase our business. Of, like, So he really, really hammered into the fact that 520 bucks an hour is how much money you need to make working 40 hours a week to make a million dollars. And I know most entrepreneurs work more than that. So, you know, let's say 350 bucks an hour, 400 bucks an hour. You know, you don't really want to work too much to, over, to overdo it, but you want to do the things that move your business towards success. And anytime you catch yourself doing a $20 an hour job, doing something that you could hire somebody and pay them $25 an hour, what you should do is you should tr make a process, outsource that, and get somebody else to do that because if you start getting in the habit of doing twenty an hour, twenty dollar an hour jobs, you're never going to make your million dollar goal. If that is your goal to begin with, if your goal is two or three or four million dollars, then you need to even do this more. Um, I know so many people that will literally burn five hours so that they could save fifty bucks or seventy dollars. Um, you know, I've done that in the past. Um, I've been working on that over the last five to ten years a lot more. I delegate almost everything out at this point. Um, I delegate so much out that I'm uh, that I need to implement a much bigger and stronger training program because I've delegated a lot out without the training that I need to do for all the people who I've delegated to. And honestly, some things aren't going as well as I'd like. So. What are similar things that I could, I could do? Like, what are things that are really, really key that me as the CEO and architect of my business should be focusing on? Uh, for me, you know, doing big deals. You know, if, I'm do if there's a deal that's on the table that's more than $10,000, yes, I'm going to be focusing on that. I'm going to definitely do that. Um, motivating the people who work for me. You know, if I spend 15 minutes motivating them, that might make me an extra $1,000 this week. I mean, maybe an extra ten thousand dollars this year, so that's definitely a thing. I'm hiring, hiring the right person. Um, obviously, making and posting such videos. If I post a video like this, that might get well, not this one. This one's not going to be for Emerald Computers, but like the other day, right after I got home from this, one of the things that they were talking about was posting videos. So I got to my store an hour after I left their their place, and I decided to put a video up. I uploaded that video to Instagram, Facebook. I uploaded that to my personal Facebook, to a Facebook group that I created. Um, and I uploaded that to my LinkedIn. 
Uh, so far, I've had at least 50 or 60 people interact with that video. I've had a whole bunch of comments and likes, and I've had almost 3,000 views on that video. It was just a quick little minute and 30 second overview on what is Emerald Computers. Because I've actually never done that on video before. I mean, I do it all the time in these little meetings. But on video, no, haven't done that. So that video alone, I think, will make a lot of um, things. Uh, you know, let's see, creating more systems. Um, de you know, defining how we do something here at Emerald Computers, uh, creating that system, making videos. Um, I already have systems for pretty much everything. Well, probably 80% of stuff. But he says, like, you know, go down super far. Like, go to make a video on how to lock the doors. Make a video on how to set off, set the alarm, turn it off and on. Make a video troubleshooting the credit card machine. You know, these are all things I've never done. Um, make a video on quite a lot of little things. I don't have any processes for those other three, um, but there's quite a lot of things that I do have processes written down, but I don't have any videos for any of that. I don't have a video on how to make a spec sheet, even though we do that every single day. I don't have a video on how to write a QuickBooks invoice. Um, we do that multiple times every day. I do have documentation, but converting those things into videos is something I definitely want to do. Um, I can't read what some of these things are. One of them says uh, running ads. Obviously, uh, we're going to make some good videos that I think, if we have a video that I think the population around me should see, you know, here's a really good deal about gaming computers or whatever. Let's show that video. I think that would be something we could do as ads. Now, on the second column, on the other side of the page, they had us write down things that we don't, that we shouldn't be doing, that things I should probably never do again. And that's things like counting inventory, um, doing tech work. Like I shouldn't be actually building computers or actually, you know, reloading windows on people's computers. Um, I do want to do it at least once a month, so I keep sharp on, especially Windows, because it constantly is changing. Uh, building computers, I'd only, maybe if you had this really specialty computer, i just kind of oversee it. I don't really need to learn it. It's all the same to me now. Um, one thing that's taking a lot of my time is every time somebody wants to recycle stuff, uh, most of my employees don't even have vehicles. And if, and then they do have vehicles, they're like, you know, I'm not going to ask them to use their own personal vehicle to drive somewhere and pick up, you know, 40 computers that somebody's recycling. I also don't have a system uh, for that. Uh, we, I, I, right now, because I don't have anybody, I, I probably do have people I can trust right now, but in the past, I've had people who I probably shouldn't have trusted who would go to an office building, pick up 50, 60 computers, and they'd stop at their house on the way home, and all of a sudden half the computers were gone. And I know what was supposed to be there because I had pictures from the guy giving me the computers or selling me the computers. And when I received them at my store, there's only half the computers there. So it's definitely something I need to trust people to do. And, you know, having people around me who would even think about stealing from me is a big giant red flag and a problem right there. Um, but having, you know, it, it's definitely something I need to figure out. And I think I can, there's a, there are some people I can trust, but none of the people I can trust own a vehicle like that. I did buy our own company vehicle, but, you know, five months ago when I saw the writing on the wall that used vehicles were going to plummet in price, I sold that vehicle. And I'm glad I did because that vehicle's already gone, 2, 000, gone down $2,000 in price, and I haven't done $2,000 in recycling. So there's a lot of differences between a CEO and a hustler. It's a lot of what we just said right there. We need to focus on creating a good culture, $500 an hour, things only. One of the things that we should be implementing and that they were also talking about is something called PPS. And that's growing your people. And you know they meet with everybody on their staff every quarter. So, yeah, usually it's not the CEO, but it's like the COO, like the second person in charge, uh, because they have like 80, 90 people. If you have less than 30 or 40 people, this should be the CEO's job. And what you do is you talk to your workers and you ask them about their goals. What are their personal goals over the next three months or in one year, five years? 
What are their professional goals? Three months, one year, five years. And what are their financial goals? Um, if their professional goals are, you know, they want to, in computers, they want to get certified on this. They want to learn how to do Cisco. Um, and they want, you know, their personal goals are they need to get a new car. They might need to get a new house. They might want to lose weight. They might want to exercise more. They might want to be able to get on a better sleeping schedule. And once I know that these are their goals, I could, I you know, I can give them rewards and incentivize them and retain them as an employee a lot better because I know what, where their screws are, where, what, what motivates them. Because I can tell them, you know, hey, you're not showing up to work on time. Are you doing okay with that whole idea of waking up earlier and, you know, not going to bed too late? You know, have that little conversation with them. And if I didn't talk about the PPFs, I wouldn't be able to do that. Of course, also financial goals. And every employee has a financial goal. You know, do they want to they want to get a new car? They want to get a new house? They want to upgrade. So that was it. It was a pretty good meeting. Um, I left the meeting, you know, pretty excited. And then I get in my car. I drive away. Um, I'm on my way to the house, you know, pretty excited. And I get a text from Aaron. And Aaron's like, oh, my gosh, we, we, you know, we're so happy to have you there. And, you know, he, I did contribute a little bit. And he's like, you know, hey, we want you to come back uh, tomorrow, you know, Thursday. And I'm like, oh, I'm already booked on Thursday. I had, like, three meetings in the morning. But, uh, and I had to do some stuff for my wife and all that stuff. And movie, and it was also the day I, you know, moved money to do um, – a whole bunch of the bills I have to pay, but I was able to do all that in the morning. I missed the morning part. Um, I got there around like what was like one thirty in the afternoon, and this time I actually whipped out my laptop and wrote down notes. Um, and the, let me go through these notes a lot faster. I, I know this is probably getting a really boring video, and I probably have ten people who are ever going to watch it this far. Um, if you did watch it this far, make sure you leave a comment down there. Um, quick notes. So they said you should make these videos that are called I did X videos. A video that says, you know, I did this today. What if you made a video every single day about your number one win, whether it's a customer win, an employee win, just something you did good in business. At the end of the day, you don't leave your office until you say, I did this. I did, you know, I helped this customer with this problem and made that customer super happy. And what if you did that every single day? At the end of a year, you know, 300, let's say you don't work on Sundays or you, you miss a few days for vacation and stuff. So let's say 320 or so videos about positive things that you did. You put those all in a special folder on maybe on, on, uh, in your YouTube group. You know, boom, you have all this stuff that you did for customers. Um, every time a customer asks a question, you make a video about it. Make sure you tag that video with the appropriate tag so that when you need to find that video again, it's easy for you to find. The reason you're making these videos is not really for the world to see. It's for that you and your people can reference that video in the future. Next, establish core values. Um, the next part was a little bit hard is once you make these core values and you're really certain and you're true that these are your core values, that these are the things that you believe in, that you think that you want your company to believe in, that you want to build your company going forward, then anybody who doesn't agree or follow those core values, they need to be gone. You need to get rid of them. That, for me, is hard. It's always hard for me to get rid of people because I always see people, you know, it's like maybe they're going to have, they're going to come around eventually. Anyway, um, I already talked about how core values should come up in the business every few minutes. Um, when people apply for a job, have, you know, they shoot you a resume and you might be interested in it. Have every single person who you're even thinking of interviewing make a video and send it to you. Not only is it going to show you their personality, show you how they talk, show you how they interact, but it also shows you how they deal with the technology. Are they able to make a video? Are they able to, to, to figure out how to make the sound look good, the audio look I mean, how to make the video look good. Are they able to figure out how to compose it? I mean, I don't know. Do, does anybody here even know how to do a watermark like this? I do. Um, it's not that hard. And, you know, do all of these things. I'm using um, the super high quality microphone right here. Let me, actually, I don't even know if I had the microphone in the right position this whole call. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the microphone wasn't too bad. I just put it up in a little bit better position. I didn't realize... It wasn't in the best position, so 
Ah, hopefully I don't have to redo the first 30 minutes of this video. <laughs> um, it is a pretty good microphone, so even if it wasn't in the exact right position, it should be pretty good. It looks like we're getting a little bit better audio quality at this point. Um, get attention. Um, keep attention. Um, wrapping vehicles. Putting signage on your building. You know, these are things that I neglect obviously i mean we have our new sun city store it's not even new it's been there for 17 months and i still don't have a sign on the building yes i've gotten quotes from at least a dozen different people yes some of them actually had some good quotes and no i have not pulled the trigger on any of them and much to the chagrin of matt the guy who runs that location um i definitely need to do that um back to the hiring video you also want to, you know, when you're hiring somebody, make some specific hoops for them to jump through just to see if they freaking pay attention. I've had, you know, make it something like, we need a video. It needs to be uploaded using, you know, into, um, you know, give onto a server. And I want the link to the video sent to my email. And the video should be no less than one and a half minutes and no more than two and a half minutes. Um, and then let's see what they do. And if somebody, if you ask for a video and they end up sending you another resume, well, you know, that's probably not the right person for you. Or if they try to highly compress the video and send it to you as an attachment to the email, yeah, maybe not. Or if they decide to make a 15 minute long video, like I like to do rambling about things, um, you know, maybe not there either. Hmm. Have a more strict hiring process. And, uh, you know, we're in a day and age where we can use Zoom now. Let's, you know, maybe do one or two interviews on Zoom before you even um, do it. It's also an yet another good, high quality uh, technical challenge test. I mean, do they have... Do they have the equipment set up? Do they know how to use Zoom? Did, because I'm going to be doing Zoom meetings with a lot of our bigger customers. So if I'm hiring a salesperson, they better know how to use Zoom. Also, if this is something that I've never really considered because I've always been pretty small company, but now we're getting a little bit bigger where, you know, bring their direct report. Uh, let's say I have a Matt who's a manager at the Sun City store. And let's say I want to hire somebody for the Sun City store. Well, obviously, don't hire anybody unless Matt signs off on it. Because then, for twofold, first off, Matt would be the one re responsible for the person's training and all that stuff. So if it's not going to be compatible with him, then that would not be a good fit. So we definitely need to have a good fit. But then also, it makes him a little bit more accountable. So he's going to be making sure that this particular employee's success was successful was a successful hire because he had his input on that hire. Describe your job that you're going to be offering this person based on the core values of your company. And they will self-select. So what this guy does, um, the, the, the people from Menace, is they'll make a crazy video and, you know, using like swear words and stuff in it and dressing casual and all high energy. And, of course, anybody who's... Because that's what they really are. That's who they, that's their authentic self. And anybody who's not going to be watching that, anybody who's watching that is going to decide, well, you know, hey, I love that culture. Hell yeah, I'm going to go work there. That's exactly the place I want to work for. And there's other people who are like, oh, no, my, oh, nope, I'm not going to work there. And so they will self-select. So you don't even have to interview half these people because they've already decided based upon your video that they don't want to work there. And you, and you don't want them to work there because they're not going to fit your culture anyway. So, and when somebody does respond, see if they were echoing your core values in their response. Next, shock and awe factor. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's under here? I mean, shock and awe factor is something they mention quite often. It doesn't seem to be in their core values. Um, let me read real quick. Creativity, go. Maybe it's under get attention, keep attention. I mean, I guess that could be where, you know, shock and awe. One of their shock and awe things, because, okay, so first off, let me step back. These people sell things that are pretty much never less than $10,000. Um, when they make a deal with a customer and they're going to get that customer, you know, there, there's a, a decent amount of profit in there, a couple thousand dollars. Um, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of money around. So what they do is, let's say they went and had a sales presentation at somebody's house. The second they leave that house, 
they jump on the website and have some dessert, some cookies or something delivered to that person's house 30, 40 minutes later. You know, couriered over. Wow. They, they've had people who, you know, call them up the admit, right after they get those cookies and say, you know, we're just going to go with you. We're not even going to have the other interviews at the other companies. They're so wowed by having this gift sent to them that now they've just committed to a $15,000 um, construction job or whatever because they received 30 bucks worth of cookies in the, uh, from a courier. That's insane. But it works. And, I, and I, it's worked on me in the past. I can tell you that. Um, you know, wow, wow these people. You know, if I go there and I'm going to make sure from now on, when I do a presentation, I'm going to send them a gift. You know, maybe, I don't know. I mean, cookies seem like a good idea. I mean, it's kind of like a computer geek thing. Diabetic. Everybody's diabetic. So I don't know how much I want to do that. But, yeah, we definitely want to wow the customers. Um... Let's see. So he definitely was saying charge more for services. You know, if your services are better than your competition, charge more than your competition. I, and that's one of my, pricing has always been one of my Achilles heels. Is I know, and my employee, and this is always the hardest part. You know, if I have a particular task that I know is only going to take me 30 minutes, or not even me, take my employee 30 minutes. And so we, you know, we charge the customer $75. But the problem is Best Buy charges the customer for that same task $250. Our competitors charge everybody. There's nobody in this business that, that actually has a brick and mortar store and is organized like we are into a company that charges people less than $100 for like a tune-up and repair and virus check and all that stuff. I mean, everybody's charging hundreds of dollars. Um, and if it's, an, if it's an emergency, we need to, we have, we do have in our price list, you know, if it's an emergency, you're calling me after hours, you're calling me on a Sunday, you're making me miss my kids, you're making me, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I, you know, we're supposed to charge you, you know, 50% more, 80% more, but half the time we don't. And that's something we need to not do. We, if, you know, if it's truly the emergency, you know, they need us right now, we need to drop whatever we're doing and go take care of them, we need to charge more because that's something we need to do. Um, this is another thing that, you know, I, deep down in my core, I've known, and I'm to the next topic, deep down in my core, I've known this for a long time and I've never really implemented it. It's that once a customer really, really trusts you trust your business, they're going to do business with you. They're not going to go around and ask for quotes. They're just going to come to you and expect that you're going to take care of them. And, I, you know, I have at least 100 really good um, customers that that's exactly what they do. They don't, they don't ask around for quotes. They never argue with me on price. They walk into our store, they point at a computer, and they're like, yeah, I'll take that $1,200 computer. You know, let's do this, this, and this to it. They know our prices. They know how much it's going to cost them to do all that. And we just charge them according to our formulas. And um, they're happy to pay. And they, they're return customers. I mean, we have this one guy who's a day trader guy. I mean, he's upgrading his computer all the time. He keeps on the cutting edge. And he's in our store almost every month. And he's a good guy. And that's what we do for him. I mean, he doesn't care about money. I mean, I do know he's... He is making a lot of money on day trade. So, well, I don't know how I hope he is, at least. So, but that's one thing we, we, we've had. I mean, I had a dentist the other day call me up, and he wanted, you know, this one thing I've been telling him about to do. And he's like, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do that major server upgrade. We're going to combine both the servers, put them into one, you know, blah, blah, blah. Do this, migrate the whole network, and you know, all this type of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And we got the whole thing done. Uh, we orchestrated it all. You know, I had to work all day on a Sunday. Um, but, you know, we got it done for him. So um, I was trying to write down a little bit of our core values. I got two of them done. Um, customer happiness is our goal. Uh, make it easy for them, obviously. And we love technology and are eager to share innovation with each other and our clients. Um, another thing they did is when you once you do finally hire a person, you send them 
a whole bunch of training videos before they come in. Let's say they're going to come in and their first day is five days from now. Well, you send them about, like, try to send them four or five videos for each day. So send them a list of 20 videos and, um, you know, quiz them on the content of those videos. Make sure they actually watch those videos when you get there. Um, you know, when you're trying to do that, you know, make a video about corporate culture. I'm going to make a video about the opportunities working here. Um, make a whole bunch of small little five-minute bite-sized videos that they could easily re look at, watch, find. Uh, we're going to make a dress code video. We're going to make a core value video. Um, let's see, some of this other stuff. Another thing that one of them does, which they actually pay their employees cash money if a customer leaves a five-star review on Google that mentions that employee's name. Um, another thing he said is strike while the iron is hot. And this is something that I totally neglect. And that's um, when a customer is super happy. It doesn't even happen to me, gosh, like just a couple days ago. I think on Wednesday. Um, I had a customer that was super happy, spent a thousand bucks. And that, it, that customer was like, oh, you know, I'm going to put a review for you on Google. I'm going to post on my Facebook. Well, and then they left. And I didn't see a Google review. I don't see any Facebook review. Um, you know, I checked a Google review yesterday. They're, they didn't make one. So the problem was we didn't strike one iron as hot. We need to say, oh, let's do that right now. You know, I'll pose it. I'll do a picture with you. Let's take some video. You know, let's, let's post it on your Facebook right now. And we want to have them leave that five-star review. Have them leave that Facebook post before they leave my office. You know, that, that right there, I mean, that's mind-blowing. Because I've, I mean, I've probably lo had a hundred people who have said, you know, I'm going to leave a five, I love you guys, I'm going to leave a five-star review for you, who did not do so. You know, I've had a hundred or so that have, which that's good. I'm glad that some people have. And then I've had people that just left reviews, I don't even know who they are. So, another interesting thing that they were doing is they like they, they were talking about an air conditioning guy and the problem with air conditioning is once you buy one you're pretty much set for a decade or so and are you even going to remember who you bought that from a long time ago so what they do which i thought was astounding is they'll put in a series of gift cards for tune-ups and other things and then also a little card that says, you know, $500 off your next AC purchase. Well, what's more likely than somebody needing a new AC because it actually goes out once they bought one, is what's definitely more likely is the average person only stays in their house five, six years. So it's much more likely that they move to a new house, they get to that new house, and they're like, um, you know what? We need a new AC unit. And guess what? They're going to dig and find that $500 gift card because $500 is $500 and you're going to find a way to do that. Now, of course, computers are a different scale. Some people buy computers more often. Um, but what if we just surprised everybody with a non-expiring $50 gift card off their purchase of their next computer whenever that may be? And guess what they're going to do? They're going to remember come back here they're not going to throw a $50 gift card away well maybe somebody will but I don't think most people would throw a $50 gift, gift card away maybe make it $100 I don't know I'm still brainstorming about this but that's something that's very intriguing to me um, you know we'll take the happy customers maybe give them a $100 gift, gift card and of course that gift card would be transferable if they want to give that gift card to their son or something who needs to buy a computer, that's totally fine. So those were some of the little takeaways that I had from The Menace. Um, I'm not going to go into what they charge because it appears that what they charge changes almost every time they give a presentation. Um, and they do offer lots of various interesting new things. They're constantly, um, I think, you know, they're, they're kind of, defining their own business and uh, as it grows you know figure out where they can be you know I wouldn't mind being a part of it in the future I definitely would almost be even willing to help them teach some stuff and 
um, maybe even possibly open a West Valley chapter. Unfortunately, um, all the Menace stuff is headquartered around Gilbert Chandler, and that's an hour drive from Peoria. So, you know, I do, I did enjoy the content, and but it makes it a lot harder to just, you know, pop in and have a little quick meeting or something when you're an hour drive each way. Um, but other than that, it's a great, it was a great thing. Um, this video is now officially way too long, so I am going to stop here. I am going to take a couple of these different points and hit them a lot more. If this was something, if, if you learned a little bit about different things, um, you know, I'm, I'm just learning, you know, reiterating what they were saying. Uh, they presented it much better than I did. Uh, follow them on Facebook, Menace in Business. Uh, follow them online. And, you know, it, I hope them, even if I don't get involved in the future, I'm, I'm, as I said before, I'll have to figure it out. Um, but I hope that they have all the success in the world. And I hope that they uh, grow. Um, their, their consulting service is definitely mostly gear, geared towards, you know, mobile service type businesses. Um, in fact, there's only me and two others in the whole building who didn't have a mobile service business. Uh, I mean, like AC guys or plumbing guys or, you know, flooring guys, you know, a lot of, a lot of housing services. They had quite a few realtors. Um, I think there's a mortgage guy, you know, some, a lot of other people who do like marketing and stuff like that. Anyway, a lot of good people, a lot of good people. There wasn't one person there. There was not one person that I did not feel was positive open, trying to learn. Um, the atmosphere was awesome. Um, very, very positive overall. So if you can follow them and next time they have one of their little meetings, you know, try to go. Well, thanks. And if you're any, if you're in Menace, um, please, please, please leave a comment on this video. Thank you.